All right, welcome everyone. And right off the flip here, I would like to thank everyone for taking a moment to watch my video. Um, if you don't know what you're watching already, this is going to be my video about my uh, post-surgery. This is day one of after having bilateral carpal tunnel release surgery. I had that this morning at about 10 o'clock. It's been a wonderful experience. And like most people, it is a surgery. So I don't care who you are. I don't care how simple the surgery is. You always are going to have questions um, in most cases. I definitely did, and it wasn't so much that I was worried about the surgery, it was just wanting to know what to expect, um, you know, what kind of things I could do, couldn't do, should do, shouldn't do, um, just, you know, the list is never ending. So the, the best way that I found to answer some of those questions wasn't really by asking the doctor, it was by talking to people that have had the surgery, and I utilized YouTube a lot to watch um, videos like I'm doing here. Um, and so I kind of wanted to return the favor back because a lot of people took the time to post videos for me to be able to utilize and use. So I figured I might as well do one. And also my experience was quite different than a lot of people that I watched or heard. And I think that just depends on um, where you're at, you know, what hospital you're using, who your surgeon is. I think there's a lot of different ways to do the surgery, a lot of different aftercares and everybody responds differently. So with that, again, I had bilateral carpal tunnel surgery this morning about 10 o'clock and I just kind of want to you know uh, share my experience I've been dealing with this for about oh three and a half to four years give or take I work in manufacturing building hydraulic cylinders I've been doing that now for a little over four years and I worked as a welder but what happened when this first flared up is I started to or I ended up getting a promotion going into programming robotic welders which was great for three and a half years and it kept it under control. I did sleep with my brace on at night, a carpal tunnel splint brace, and you know, I just maintained, life was good. But here recently I made the decision to go back into production and things flared up miserably. I uh, wouldn't wish that pain on my worst enemy. If you're someone watching that is dealing with carpal tunnel, you probably know what I mean. So there is some levels where it's, I think that's maintainable and it's controllable, but you know when you're at the point that it's like, hey, this has got to get fixed. Time for surgery. So, and that's where I was. Um, if people after watching this want to know anything about the nerve conduction study and how that goes, have any questions about that, I felt like I couldn't find anything on that because everything that I found said um, the complete opposite of my experience. I'll leave it at that. But I can't do a video on that at a later at a later date. But uh, so. Jumping in here, uh, night before surgery, I had to do a pre-surgical uh, shower where you, they send you these things. It's like a, a scrub, brush, scrub brush about that big. And you just wash from the, the neck down, scrubbing everywhere and really focusing on your hands, arm, nail beds. It has a nail scrub brush in there too. And you do that for about five minutes, rinse off, go to bed. Um, I couldn't have anything to eat or drink after midnight last night at my surgery. I had to be at the hospital at 8.15 this morning. I rolled in. If you're a female, um, I guess it is normal practice that your anesthesiologist can require that you do a pregnancy test in the morning. So I, right away they wanted me to take, give them a urine sample for a pregnancy test just for safety purposes. So I did have to do that. So I might recommend that um, maybe try to hold it in the morning before you head off to the hospital so that way you can make sure that you can go. And also I want to, while everyone know, I'm not going to be very modest in this video. I'll talk about some things that uh, need to be talked about. So just to prepare you. Um, let's see, got to the hospital, got in, nurses was checking me in. They informed me that I needed, I was going to have three IVs. Oh my God, my head spun when they told me that, but it was a piece of cake. Um, things have changed since the last time I had surgery. I think I was 18, give or take. Um, Never had a problem with IVs at all. I, I always thought they weren't that bad. But today they offer a little uh, lidocaine shot with them. It's just like just right under the skin and it was painless. Didn't burn at all. And so I didn't feel the IVs at all. It was great. So where my IVs went because I had bilateral is I had one IV in the back of each hand. So that was two of them. And they were a smaller needle because they were just for the doctor to put the, uh, the nerve block in. Uh, the third IV went up here in my... Uh, right elbow because that's my, my better vein and that one was like a regular IV so that was the one that they put all my my fluids through and um, all my happy medicine that they gave me I'll say 
uh, doctor came in, surgeon this morning, touched base with me, told me what we were going to be doing, um, kind of what to look for aftercare wise, how long I would be off and stuff like that. And next thing I know, they're grabbing me, blowing me off into surgery. All I remember when I got into the operating room was crawling over onto the operating table. It was a pretty comfortable bed and it had two um, like arm wings that came out so I could lay both arms out. And as soon as I laid on that bed, I had the anesthesiologist over me, which, oh, let me back up. He did, the anesthesiologist, of course, came in and spoke with me, and he was great. He had a wonderful personality, made me feel so comfortable, and he was making jokes, telling me, hey, we'll give you some happy medicine. You aren't going to be worried about a darn thing. He said, we'll start you off with five martinis. You'll be feeling good, and if we need to add more, we'll add more. I liked that. He put me in a great mood. So, um, it was great, and he, he was right away, was, you know, up over my head talking to me, and... Um, I don't even think I was laying on that bed within within a minute and I started feeling pretty good and I said did you already give me something he says yep I sure did so I don't remember much after that I felt uh, a lady put the tourniquet on my arm but like she didn't like it wasn't active it was just like she was just putting it on and wrapping it I don't remember anything after that However, and I don't mean this to scare anyone, but I, I do want to share that um, during surgery, and I do have a, like a faint recollection of this, but um, this hand, when they were making the incision, I felt it, but not in a painful way. I just felt the sensation of them cutting my hand, and uh, I, they said that I, I did, because I was still half awake during surgery, so I had all this medicine that just made me not care you know I was half in half out and I did say um, am I supposed to feel you cutting that and so the, the anesthesiologist told my mom and my fiance after surgery that I had said that he goes I just gave her some more Michael Jackson juice and she was good so um, I do remember it a little bit but it wasn't a painful thing it was not painful I had no care in the world at all it was wonderful um, I don't know. I felt like I had just gotten in the operating room and two minutes later I was waking up back in my room and laughing my ass off. I, I was happy. I was feeling no pain. Um, so some people had said that they, and I felt good, but I mean, I was coherent. Like I knew what was going on and I knew people were talking to me. My nose itches. I'm sorry. Um, but my hands, no pain at all. And I, I noticed in a lot of videos that people talk about how when they wake up, their hand felt like it was asleep and uh, very swollen, like it felt big and numb and, you know, similar to what we wake up with in the middle of the night with carpal tunnel. Sorry, my nose itches. Um, I had, I still have not experienced that. My fingers have full sensation. They did when I woke up. I don't know, I guess I'm just different than most people. Every, all the videos I watched, people couldn't feel their fingers. So I had full sensation, I can move them, I can move my thumb, everything is great. Um, as soon as I woke up from surgery, I was instantly hungry and thirsty, so I ate some peanut butter toast, had some coffee and water, and I was out of there. I mean, quicker than I could blink, blink they discharged me, and uh, fiance and I went and ate. We had went to China, uh, a Chinese buffet, and we ate. That was tough. Um, oh, let me back up. He did have to help me get dressed. That's something that I'm still struggling with. Um, he had to put my jeans on for me. He had to button my jeans for me. He had to put my bra on for me. He had to put my shirt on for me. I couldn't do any of that. So it's really good if you have somebody with you that you're comfortable with them doing those things. Um, while I have no pain, I kind of when I'm just hanging out like this, there's no pain. I can't do any like pushing, pulling, nothing with pressure. So that's definitely a major thing. Um, what else here? So we went out to eat. Appetite was great. Um, they gave me tramadol for pain. You can have one to two every six hours. I took two right away when we went to eat Chinese food. And what did we do after that? Oh, we stopped and got some coffee and then we came home. And I took a nap till about five o'clock. We got home about one and I slept till about five. And here I am. It's about 6.30 or so now. I'm feeling great. I just took another pain pill just to stay on top of it. I do suggest that if you are going to fall asleep, maybe set a an alarm clock to make sure you don't skip a pain pill because you don't want to get behind that. Um, all right. So as soon as we got home, I had to go take a tinkle or I had to pee. And I thought, hmm, well, this is going to be the true test because I had both done. Everyone's giving me a hard time about... 
are you going to be able to wipe or what are you, are you scared about that and blah, blah, blah. Well, I was worried about it, but you know what? I wanted them both done. I was like, get this done and over with. I ain't coming back a second time to do it again. So I, uh, I thought that I would be fine wiping. I was like, oh, I'll be good. No big deal. I still had my fiance in the bathroom with me though. Um, this dressing is extremely thick though. I could totally wipe all day long, but if you can see the thickness of that, um, it's actually preventing me from being able to do that. Um, so he did have to do that, but it was just when I went tinkle, so no big deal so far. Um, now after my nap, when I woke up, I did have to go pee again, and I was able to do it myself. So. It's just kind of going to be a hit and miss for a minute, but today's Friday and I just had my surgery. Um, I just had my surgery today, Friday, and I'm allowed to take these off on Sunday. So no big deal after Sunday. I'll be fine in that department. So if you are thinking about having bilateral, you can totally do all of your bathroom duties fine. Now, as far as showering goes, I have not done that yet because I already showered today. So I had, before surgery, um, I had my mother who is a hairstylist, so she brought me over some bags that they use in the salon when they do like paraffin wax dips. I plan on putting those bags around my hands with a bunch of tape at the bottom. And I'm sure my fiance is going to have to help me in the shower. So if you are thinking about bilateral, again, make sure you have somebody that you're comfortable with in those kind types of situations. So, um, pain level, nothing. Like, I mean, they're sore and I can't do things like open a door, um, to get my ice water earlier. Uh, my fiance had to get me the ice cause I couldn't do that. But like I can lift, lift my glass of ice water and you drink my makeup. I did my makeup around five o'clock by myself. Um, that went fine. I mean, it's just kind of is what it is. I would definitely have somebody home with you the day of surgery and probably the day after is what I'm thinking. Just to, you know, get things like that for you, to do the ice. I couldn't open my medicine bottle. That was another thing, my tramadol when I tried to take it. So if you are going to be home alone, make sure somebody leaves those things open for you. Um, let's see. Other than that, this has been a cakewalk. I was a little nervous about this, but now I'm like, this is the easiest damn thing I have ever done when it comes to a surgery. And I've had a lot of surgeries, especially when I was a kid, but I totally recommend it to anybody if you are struggling with carpal tunnel. It's been an absolutely wonderful experience so far. My hands feel amazing, amazing. So I can't wait to see what's gonna happen once the swelling goes down. And Cause I can't feel some swelling here in the palm area, but this one feels totally normal. I feel like nothing happened to my left hand until I tried to use it for like pressure and stuff. But just been absolutely amazing. Um, again, I do strongly recommend it. If you're thinking about having the surgery, do it. I totally would. Um, but yeah, I'll try to do a, uh, another video tomorrow, let you guys know how I'm doing, because I know they say there's like a nerve block that can wear off, so maybe tonight I could go downhill a bit, but we'll see what happens. So thanks for watching, and I will uh, be posting more videos. Thanks, guys. Bye.